So um, this is our last session of the initial inaugural Automotive Linux Summit Europe. Look, I can clear out a room like <laughs> nobody's business. Man, my breath must really stink. <laughs> so my name's Walt Miner, and this is my colleague, Jan Simon Muller. Hello. He's a release manager for Automotive Grade Linux. Um, basically, this is our birds of a feather session, so if you have any questions, comments, great thoughts, we'd like to hear it. And so basically, I'm just gonna show the same like couple slides I showed at the end of my presentation earlier today. Uh, basically, um, you wanna get involved, how can you help? This is where we uh, can help you with that. Basically, the major projects we're looking at this year involve uh, vehicle to cloud, and um, basically an RTOS interface and defining what an RTOS, how to use an RTOS within the context of AGL, uh, container or orchestration within our software defined vehicles expert group, um, developer workflow and defining a, uh, how to package apps and deploy apps is a really big uh, hole in our uh, ecosystem right now. Um, documentation improvements is another big, uh, always, uh, always for any open source project is always a big so source of need. Um, and then uh, if you're interested in helping out with uh, design, if you're a design type person and want to help out with the design of reference apps. But I'm going to open up the floor to questions. We have, we have lots of, we have all of our great thinkers here from AGL in the room. We even managed to coax Marius here. So uh, if you have a question or a comment, please, uh, we'll pass the mic. And this is great. If it's short, we can all go have, we can all go have beers shortly, so. Nothing? Philip. It's, it's not directly a standard developer question. Well, we ha you have it there with web app, Flutter, Qt, and so on. And it, I was wondering if we see SDV container orchestration, what about the flow? I missed the morning session, I have to say. And I was wondering, what about things like telematics, gateway, where are more the core of the Linux get in? Is there something which you consider on the roadmap, not directly like the others, which I would like to see because of the safety part of it, but more in the general wider scope because the traditional AGL is so much on cluster side and so what about the telematics, way forward, gateways? Vehicle to cloud expert group is addressing that. Um, so there's a, I could bring up the other presentation, but basically there's a, um, a vehicle to cloud expert group meets every other Monday. Uh, AWS is leading that. We're working on, the, James has been defining requirements and architecture for uh, vehicle to cloud interfaces using MQTT and protobufs and building on VSS and VIS, but then also how to act as that vehicle gateway, you know, that gateway within the vehicle to the other ECUs and, um, you know, collecting telematics data, collecting diagnostic information and sending it up to the cloud. So that's, that's really been the purview of the vehicle to cloud expert group the last few years in conjunction with the connectivity expert group that Scott's been working on. So, and Scott, we've had, we've had a telematics uh, kind of a silver box um, profile for quite a while, and so Scott can talk about that. Yeah, we've had a we had a profile which was effectively just a very simple, like you know, core image minimal type of thing from Pocky with you know a couple more bits, um, and then the demo image was a very simple uh, data collector that pushed up with MQTT that I put together, um, which currently right now, um, the demo image is there and the, and the collector isn't being built because it used the old app framework. Uh, and I have, we haven't had a lot of input on the, the EGs, but uh, I have sort of gone back and forth in my head of whether it makes sense to actually put Cooksa into that demo image because it seems a little heavyweight for what you might build. and in. In my head, I sort of envision that uh, in a real deployment and production, you probably have, uh, you know, the Cooksa data broker or server running somewhere is more central, and uh, a telematics device would probably be a client 
as opposed to running its own copy of it. Um, but for the purposes of having a working demo, I might just go and do it before we ship uh, 16.0. Um, but it, some of it comes back to, you know, James is doing some work to define this protocol that, you know, comes out of some work he's done before and what AWS are, are interested in. Uh, but like anything, this, you know, there's a whole bunch of different things in this space. Um, so if folks are interested in it, I mean, it's very easy for us to say, here's a base image, you know, and it's very plain headless device image and you can put whatever you want on there to, you know, act as a data collector and, and actually do your cloud stuff. And uh, in addition to the stuff I've done, we've had a couple of previous demo things. Um, there's somebody had a, a demo that used, um, some stuff out of Intel, the IoT cloud services API that they had put together. So the things we can do, but it, you know, it's mostly we're, we look for input and <laughs> it's pretty hard to get sometimes. So um, if you're interested in a specific technology demo and you know, there's open source implementation, then you know, it's definitely on the table um, that we could put that together and have it in tree upstream as something that people can look at. Um, one of the things that uh, the vehicle the cloud guys are looking for specifically is more OEM and tier one input as to whether the solution they're uh, creating is the correct one, is usable, is you know something you guys would be interested in. So clearly Bosch would be very welcome uh, as part of this discussion. And but on the other hand, Sven and um, Eric, I guess. pardon me, Eric. Yeah, yeah. Eric. Yeah, there have been a couple of, of Bosch guys participating in the Vehicle yeah. to Cloud work, work expert group. Hmm? Are they both on? Here. This one works better, yeah. Yeah, I guess this is also related. Second question then, um, because this Vehicle to Cloud, I guess, gets quite close to the SDV container topics which you have, right? Yeah, they're, they're yeah, they, they're touching, right? Yeah, so you, at least I heard last week that there is also some Eclipse SDV outreach to AGL, some discussion going on? There has been, yeah. So uh, again, some of the Bosch guys from the Leda project have reached out and uh, we've talked to them a few times. Um, so, you know, and we're, of course, we're monitoring what's going on in the SDV project, but it's one of those things where there's a lot, so there's a lot of different things that are going on there. I hate to say it, but a lot of times we go, they announce something, we go look in the repositories and they're empty. Um, yep. <laughs> uh, so I, I think as with anything in AGL, we're an open source project. We welcome code contributions. If somebody from the SDV project, any of the SDV projects, I mean, really it's, it's an umbrella project, wanted to start building their code in AGL, we of course would, would welcome that if they, if they bring it in. Um, in the case where we pulled in Kuxa, you know, .val, which is another kind of SDV thing, um, you know, we, Scott went and figured out that it was something worthwhile for us. Uh, it, so we're basic, you know, if, but if anybody brings code to us, we're more than happy to uh, take a look at it and incorporate it. Yeah, and I guess in the leader case, they want to take the other way around and also utilize the AGL as such, right? To say, rather than taking the plain Yoktopoki maybe going forward and utilizing the AGL Yoktobase image rather than taking their own level. So at least that's what I heard last week in a workshop where yeah, some people it, it's they been want to reach out again. mentioned to us, but not in a real concrete way. It's okay. been mentioned that's something so that like has ideas. been considered. But yeah, so yeah, that's right. You had your uh, event last week, yeah, which I heard was very successful. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, I, again, we're willing to talk to anybody about about how to incorporate their code. Um, and I get then the SDV container work group topic interest group would be most likely the best place to start with, right? If we're um, talking the SDV part, then if yeah. you have an SDV group, yeah. yeah there's yeah. Ar already some overlap. There's people in our SDV EG that are also tell us that they are in the Eclipse SDV working groups and stuff as well. So like some of the ADL, AWS folks, I believe, has said that they contribute on the Eclipse side. So at least as far as I know. <laughs> but. Hey, thanks. Okay. 
Oh, Chris. Hi. Um, so I do a lot of work with uh, Android and Android Automotive, mm -hmm. so which seems to be getting a lot of traction in the IVI um, uh, space. So what does that mean for AGL? Do, do, does AGL coexist with Android, or is it a replacement? So the, what, what, what's, the, what's the story there? Yeah, absolutely. So if you look at our, um, we've had companies showing, showing basically, uh, I think the, at least one of these demos mentions AGL running in a virtual machine alongside Android. Um, yeah, EPAM has done that. And I've seen it in a few other places done. So they'll have AGL running some of the, the, the vehicle functions, the, the more you know, classic vehicle functions, and then passing that along to Android. So there's, there's no reason at all why they couldn't coexist. Um, and we've heard, we've heard of people doing this as, as well as showing, just showing demos. Yeah, there's, I've heard people tell me that they've been doing work for tier ones to do like system container type stuff where it's Android and you know something built with AGL and one of the other containers. So not even just virtualization, but on, know, on, some of the more system container type of things. On the other hand, nobody's upstreamed anything to us that would allow, that would make that would cr cause me to say, hey, you could just pull this off the shelf and go run it. I don't, we don't have that, but we know that people are doing it. Okay, yeah, yeah. That, that, I mean, that, that fits in with what what, uh, what, what I, my understanding. So, uh, I mean, are there incompatibilities, like at the VertIO level or something? Some again, I, the EPAM guys were showing it with running the VertIO that that Panasonic and the SDV workgroup had done. Um, as far as I know, there were no incompatibilities, but we'd have to talk to the EPAM guys. Um, I I don't have a lot of information. Um, as far as I know, they didn't. They did not run into major roadblocks there. As that was my understanding. Cool. Good. Good to know. Yeah, and the, yeah. the Vert IO stuff. Scott can speak to it. Maybe I mean, most of that comes down to people just take the Vert IO drivers and side or backport them, right? So, you know, to the host kernel, um, or to the guest. Depends on which piece of the puzzle you're looking at. Uh, I mean, most of the big issues for us for open source and AGL have been uh, like the back ends for the host side. Um, because a lot of the newer Vert, Vert IO things like CAN and sound and Bluetooth, uh, Open Synergy have support for that. They've worked to actually get the Vert IO standardization done for it, but their, their back ends are an open source. Uh, so there's actually Lenaro has been doing some work in this space and the AGL STBEG is going to fund somebody this year to do um, like, like a can, I believe, and sound, I think, were the two. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I think the work will probably be leveraging the, uh, the Rust um, vHost stuff that uh, Lenaro have done. Um, and so that's something we'll probably have, like, buildable in AGL. Um, right now, there's actually recipes that have been contributed for the... Uh, GPIO and I2C Vertio backends at Lenaro. We haven't merged those yet, uh, but it's it'll happen. You know, probably either for a Pike point release or for the next release. Um, so that, that the pieces are there. It's just uh, um, probably you'd need to actually look to see what the Android kernel you want to use in the VM supports, <laughs> and then you know sort of piece things together to actually have it all work. Okay. Thanks. Any other, uh, any questions? Any other questions? Hi, so um, probably a question for you, Jan Simon. Uh, the talk we just had about, um, from Laurence from Code Think, uh, how much that testing and open QA stuff that you guys planning to integrate or have integrated um, you know, yeah, we do have the Lava set up uh, already, so that's what we we have been using uh, all the time. Um, OpenQA, uh, we did not do that because we mainly we did not test the graphical UI, right? So we did not need the the needles. 
we need to see if if we maybe once once the UI is redone, uh, that could be an option to look into the UI part then. Um, uh, basically, for now and for kind of getting the, the hardware testing, Canvas, Lava uh, itself does the trick for us. Yeah, we need to see if 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 open QA, uh, um, uh, well, if, if we can put that, attach that to the existing one, yeah. It's certainly an option once, once uh, if you need UI testing, yes, go for open QA, yeah. If you have more hardware testing and basically you're fine with terminal, then you could probably skip that one. And obviously that's for your own testing, but in terms of providing tooling for you know, the end users and the OEMs, is that what you're planning to do, so kind of providing these test tooling packages for them to use, or do you, just, you know, is this, this research, this work being done more just of general interest, or, you know, did, is AGL planning to provide this kind of tooling to end users, or are you just providing the tooling for your own internal testing? Well, for the for the Lava side that we have in place, the the test definitions are in our repo, and and you can grab them, you can extend them. Um, um, yeah, we. we <laughs> the idea so is that we would I, have I, I, see I, I, in a box. You could pick up what we were doing, box, and yeah. you could deploy it. You could deploy it locally. That was that was the original concept, and I, I believe we're still. Adhering to that, and you can go back uh, to some of our take some of Jan Simon's previous uh, talks on YouTube about about how to do that. Yeah, yeah. Any other great thoughts, comments? No, you could wrap this up early then, if no one else has anything. You know, if we wrap this up in two minutes, it'll be five o'clock, we'll have worked from nine to five. I think there was a song about that once. So, okay, I guess that's it. Thank you, everybody. Thank uh, you. Thanks for attending ALS Europe for the first time. And uh, we'll see you the rest of the week. Enjoy the rest of, AL rest of EOSS. Mm-hmm.